What's going on YouTube? Super simple video today. I had recently got the 50 mil 1.2 GM, which I'm super happy about. I don't know why I'm acting so mundane and I, I love that lens. I haven't been able to do much with it. I've just been really preoccupied with work. So I just thought, let me put something together just to show you guys something, you know, because you're subscribed, you deserve it. So this is the first time I've tried to use animal eye autofocus, but I'll get into that when you guys are watching the video. In this instance, I had the 50 on the a7 IV and the 135 on the a7 R4. On any other videos moving forward, it's probably gonna be the 50 mil on the R4 or whatever the wider lens is. You get, you get where I'm going, let's get it. Doesn't look like they're very hungry. So they've had plenty. Look, people are throwing them food, maybe not. So likewise, even though it's a really overcast day, I've got plenty of it. That, that right there, the white coat is, uh... oh, finally, they come over. Yeah, that was overexposed. Yeah, so super, super overcast today. Um, I'm able to keep my ISO all the way down to the ground, natively at 100. Um, my shutter's at 640, but I don't really need that. It's just to kind of let in less light so I can keep it exposed well. I've never turned this on, but let's see a focus in mode. Let's see if changing it to an animal eye autofocus would be better. Hopefully animal We'll pick up birds as well. So if I'm honest, uh, using a 50 mil here was really, really tough unless I was right in front of an animal. And um, for this instance, I was for these closer goats and whatever. Some of these shots are shot with a 135. All right. This is me being lazy. Low angles are always better. Let's get low. I still love it. Still gives me some awesome results. And actually going off of the back of that, let's um, let's talk about the A7 IV um, and the R4. If I'm honest, seeing as I've spent more time with the R4, I am starting to like the benefits of having the 61 megapixels. Um, I know some people aren't really bothered by it. I think when I had 24, I, I was fine with it. There was no problems. But now that I'm used to that 61, and being able to crop in so tightly, I do notice the differences now shooting on a 33. Uh, don't get me wrong, it's not it's not the end of the world, but if, if you're used to something, then it just kind of makes that difference. But on a positive note, things like tracking, like what you're gonna see with some of the animals here, uh, is ridiculous. Like, the A7 IV locks on so nicely. So the animal eye autofocus seems to work for birds too, as you've just seen. It is quite confusing all of these autofocus settings, if I'm honest. Like there's no point in turning on bird eye autofocus. Well, there might be, but I've not noticed the difference for these stationary birds anyway. The bird eye autofocus actually clicked on that time, which is decent. Hello. Yeah, God knows why he's scared. They've got a half, Staff pit, monster-looking thing, and and he's and he's scared of, he's scared of this little baby. Yeah, it's well confusing. I was good posing. I was good posing. I must say that I am enjoying having something that's mid-range. Um, although the 50 does seem quite wide to me just because of what I've been used to, 
spending over a year with the 70 to 180. These ones look chubbier in the face than, I think they're babies actually, now I think that. Then using 135, it's just, yeah, I've not been used to it. But I really like it. Uh, and it must be babies. I really like being able to get some of the 135 results when it comes to depth and separation uh, by using 1.2, but at a much wider scale. It's it's so it's so pretty, so pretty to use. They're just savaging the bag underneath. Look at these ones underneath. Can you see them? <laughs> they're not eating it, they just want to... Interesting little animals. I must say that I haven't really explored using lower f-stop numbers yet. I can imagine that it would still be really easy to use. Legit looks like uh, Timon on Pride Rock. Oh, hello. Yeah. Look, look, look. Hello. I was really amazed that I was able to pick up, well, some of the photos anyway, uh, right on the eyes at 1.2. It's, um, it's crazy to come see back, just dude. how technology has advanced, really. Oh, bro, I've come back so I can get the high water focus on me. It's getting so good that, you know, you've got to kind of do the opposite from, from what you want to do. In, in shooting shallow, you've got to kind of stop down to to get to get yeah, the meerkat man. back in focus. Why but, do they uh, do that? They go around in a circle, they come back. Uh, today, I, like I said, I just wanted to play around with it. I just wanted to just kind of push the limit, see what I can get out of it. And uh, I really enjoyed it. I really like this lens. See, we're doing it again. There we go, there we go. Oh, come back, man. They keep, they, they keep doing laps, right? And then they'll come back and then they'll do a lap. As you would probably know, it's a no-brainer. I'm not having any second thoughts about getting it or keeping it or anything like that. It's um, that is awesome. That is an awesome shot. Hang on, let's see what we got. Right. Oh yeah, Mika's always still the show when I come here. It's definitely gonna have its place in my in my camera bag. So, for the first impressions, yeah, I like the lens. Thank you for watching. If you've got any more questions, make sure you hit me up in the comments. And if you want to know more about the gear that I have in my bag, make sure you click the video feeds and, you know, we'll, we'll go talk about it.